Konbawa Toyota MR2 fans. So I've been waiting for this one for a while. I first saw it on uh, I think Champion DJK's channel and he had a jacked up roof and all that stuff. So hopefully this doesn't have the same problems. I had to get this because when I was in high school, my neighbor and best friend at the time, he had one of these. He bought one used whereas I drove around a piece of <coughs> a piece of junk Mitsubishi Tredia. <laughs> that thing was garbage. It had a carburetor. And so it naturally broke down repeatedly in the wintertime, frozen carb or something like that. Anyways, this is a 1985 Mark I in super red. Not an ordinary red, super red. Wikipedia is telling me that these cars were powered by a 1.5 up to a 1.6. <laughs> so not much difference there in the displacement of literage. Uh, but there was a supercharged version of that 1.6. And so power ranged between like 110 to 130, depending on the country you lived in, for the normally aspirated ones. Where's my screwdriver? Sorry. And then it's saying here like 145 for the supercharged version. My my neighbor, my friend, had the uh, just the basic one. But uh, so if I was in high school, I must have been around 17 at the time when he we were driving to school in this thing. So this is the first car I remember that actually handled like a sports car. When I say handling, I'm talking about turning like a sports car, not going in a straight line. Straight line performance was probably horrible with uh, so little horsepower, 112 horsepower for the American version. But man, this thing handled like a go-kart. It, it, it was just a new experience for me because everything else I'd driven was either a big American boat or a front-wheel drive piece of garbage, Japanese little... Uh, economy car. So, although this car was economical, being a mid-rear engined uh, vehicle, the performance was just, it was something else. It, it turned in a way I'd never been accustomed to. So, that's, uh, that's why I love this car. And he drove the heck out of that thing. Uh, probably at least 200,000 miles out of that thing. And he, he revved that engine like, uh, he, like he stole that car. So, he, he abused it. Okay, enough of, of that, so sorry for the long intro, but, uh, you know, part of collecting, besides just getting cool cars, is remembering that I'm old. <laughs> Anyways, okay, so Power 64, we got uh, some serious tire rub against that fender. Uh, yeah, this thing doesn't, it won't spin at all. Yeah, look at that, it's just too much friction going on. And then again, I don't know what the deal is with this company, why they can't get this right. It looks like the tire is too big for the wheel. There's a gap right here. And so I've run into this before where, let's just do it. Let's do it right now. So, a little tutorial. So nice thing about this brand, besides telling you what the car is, what scale, who made it, they'll tell you when, they're screwed together. So you want to do wheel swaps, you want to, you want to repaint the interior, or if you want to fix a problem like right now, that's why you need a screwed together base. And plastic bases are fine because they cost less to ship. And when's the last time you saw a plastic based Hot Wheels go bad? I don't know why people are so sketched out about plastic models. When's the last time you saw your garbage barrel go bad? Those things sit out in the sun for decades and they still do fine. It just depends on the type of plastic, you know. So. I'm uh, hoping the type of plastics in these 164s are nice and like UV stabilized and will last decades. Uh, you know, given that Hot Wheels will last like 50 years or forever, uh, I'm hoping they at least have that caliber of plastic. So yeah, you can actually see the interior is just your standard uh, black but nicely molded details. Uh, I do remember the seats are super low to the floor. So that's also another reason why it felt like a go-kart, besides its ability to actually drive like one. Alright, so, back to this. You see? Oh, that one's... Let's just take this off. What I think is going on is there's too much plastic here in the center rib, and it's stretching out the tire. So, if you get some, uh, like, electronics clippers, you can, like these, side cutters you know because they would cut from one side I'm just gonna clip right here in the middle and on the other side here in the middle so now I've removed more plastic that hopefully won't you know 
stretch out the tire as much as the, all this plastic right here. So let's do this again. Alright, so let's pop this back on here. Very often, uh, also this little molding section right here, where it comes off the, the sprue, maybe that is getting in the way. So like, yeah, in this case it might actually be a little too wide, and so that's why you want to get some really fine electronics side cutters. But don't cut any metal with those things, they're not meant for metal, they'll, they'll probably dull the blade or maybe even snap it. So now Z, that's a nice tight tire, tight like a tiger. Very nice. Yeah, I think that's the trick. See, a little bit too stretched out here. Not stretched out here. This side doesn't look so bad, but I might as well just go ahead and do it on both. So it looks like the, both of the front and rear tires are the same size, and I'm pretty sure that's the way it was on the real car because, uh, you know, it was an economical sports car. Yeah, such skinny tires, but uh, the engine was pulled from a Toyota Corolla, so again, with 112 horsepower in the U.S., this is probably more tire than the engine could even handle. I don't think my friend ever was able to do like a burnout in the thing. Yeah, I guess it came with decent tires from stock. Okay, there's a construction there at the uh, windows, two pins in the back and some tabs in the front. I always like to know how these things are built. So the whole roof obviously is uh, the plastic as well. But from the outside you can see the red, it doesn't look too bad. It, it looks very similar to the red of the die cast. Maybe it's a little bit lighter as light gets in there, but when I put it back together, hopefully it will, uh, maybe it'll darken it. I'm not gonna repaint this interior, although like maybe I will later. Uh, I remember my friend's MR2, it had like a gray interior, if I recall. And my friend smoked and he, <laughs> he ruined that interior with cigarette ashes. Like I said, he, he abused it. Later in college, college, he delivered pizzas and things, so, you know, being a pizza delivery guy, you can only imagine how many miles he would put on this car. And this is in, uh, New England, so... Yeah, amazingly, he never wrecked the thing. You'd think in the snow he would wreck this thing, being rear-wheel drive. Okay. So, yeah, he had these wheels. These are the standard OEM wheels. Pretty funky, weird tri tri-lobe geometric things. You can see the four lug nut details there. What I do feel is weak is uh, no air passing here. They could have easily molded this wheel, I think, to have this rectangle pass air. I mean, I've seen much tinier holes in wheels, so that's kind of lame, I think, Para. You guys uh, could have done better. Also, you can see this, uh, I don't think, I think the axles might actually be too wide. You see how much, look at this, the play here. So, boy, look at that, that's, that's pretty bad, right? I'm going to have to clip this open, I mean, take it apart again. And I'm going to clip the axles down, but I'm not going to make you watch it. Hold on a second. Alright, we're back, and I did paint the interior like a gray, because the cloth interiors were kind of like that, instead of black. Alright, and I also trimmed off a tiny bit of off, off the axle, maybe like 3 or 4 millimeters, and, you know, it, it fits a lot better now, I think. And actually, the front wheel now spins, so I don't know what has happened before, but... Uh, okay, not still not very well, but... Alright, so let's continue on. We have the fuel filler door here. The door handle is, you know, dimensional and it's painted black. There's no color on this reflector, so that's pretty weak. But there is a bump, so you could paint it pretty easily yourself. As I mentioned, the wheels are kind of weak. Um, going to the front. Yeah, oh, well, this is kind of nice. You got a plastic inserted... What are these things? Turn signals? Yeah, they're turn signals. Maybe this is a JDM one. I think the US version had orange uh, lights up here, but this one's obviously clear. And, and then uh, obviously the pop up headlights in the down position. And what's going on with this now? Oh, it's just some like glue grime or something. Hmm. 
Yeah, some weird glue grind going on. I did not put that on my on. All right, well, anyways, it can be removed. Uh, this side of the car, oh, you got the vent. I forgot about that. There's a vent here to the engine. So that's nicely molded. Nice detail there. You know, thin streaks. And they're deep enough that they look like they're black. I don't think there's any black paint in there, but they look like, it looks like there is. All right, going to the light. Let's see on the back. Well, this one's a little crooked, but it's nice that they're uh, translucent. The red, good separation. Unfortunately, there's a little too much plastic here. Again, you could probably pop it apart, push out the pins, trim that off, and put it back, which maybe I'll do later on. The wing is a separate piece, three struts. This one's kind of floating, so this wing looks like it's not pressed down all the way. So the, another, well, I was going to call these lame because they're blank, blanked off, there's no depression, but they are very thin, so I guess I'll let that slide today. These are nice, these little uh, vent details, but no black paint. But the black paint is more important up here, or next to this area here, and it's nice that it actually has a printed on license plate of some sort, instead of just a blank plate, right? Okay, so some vent details molded in, nice ribbing, you can add some black paint if you really want to. And here's the canopy issue. So I am noticing there's a gap here. That's not so good. It's not good at all, really. And then uh, it, it is painted nice, though. The black of the window trim. You got a clear wing here, but black up here. So I think that actually is accurate, looking at the photographs I pulled up there, which I haven't even compared to. So let me, let me, well, let's finish this off. The mirrors here, they have a reflective sticker. Hoping they don't fall off. And there, are they? I think they might be rigid plastic, but they're pivoting in a hole. Okay, so with the gray interior, it's so much easier to see. The windows are relatively flat, so there's no not much distortion. Yeah, it's too bad Pyro doesn't buy other color plastics for the interiors, because this is a. You can appreciate the work a lot better if it's a lighter colored interior. So, yeah, this side also has a bit of a gap. It's, it's better than the other one, but you see this gap under there? So, again, I think you could fix it by taking the model apart. Okay, now let's compare it to those photos. Or did I do this? I think I did do this. I don't even remember. I was going out of order. Opening things up, fixing problems. I'm just gonna do it twice, so you get a second chance. Those are some really kind of lame wheels. I like these much more. They're very unique, you know. Yeah, the rear view. Yeah, see the lights. They match up pretty well. And you can see this like it's not really a spoiler because it's pretty flush. It's some sort of arrow add-on, but it looks like it's clear. I don't recall that at all on my friend's uh, car. Maybe this is, well, this is a European version, so, okay, maybe they modeled a, a Euro version, because obviously this is not a U.S. one with a steering wheel here. That's usually where I sat, and my friend would drive me to school. We would actually commute back then. Why take two cars? All right, uh, okay, yeah. Let me, <laughs> I'm going to see if I can fix some of these problems, so. We'll pause again. Okay, so I thought I'd share this with you guys because you might have the same problems if you buy this. So this back piece of glass is a separate piece from the canopy. But the problem, I think, is probably, you see these two little sprue pieces? There's a little bit of flash there. You can see it better from the back. Maybe. Hold on here. See that rectangle right there and there? I kind of feel like those should have been trimmed off more. And that might be what's preventing the roof from going down. There's a pin right here in the roof piece, but it's not visible on the bottom. The problem is, I can't remove this because if you see this glue mark, it's rigid. It's not a soft glue, which is really odd because back here in the tail light, it is a soft glue. So I removed both of these uh, yellow tail lights, well, blinkers, and uh, I trimmed off the extra plastic and I used school glue to remount it, but it's a soft glue. So that's not an issue. As to why they choose to use a rigid glue here, I don't understand. 
but if it, it is rigid, you don't want to pry this because the glue is probably stronger than the plastic. But if I pry this up, I'm pretty sure I'll create a crack and that crack would actually go up here and be visible. So I have to leave it alone. But that's the... It looks like it was well designed, it's just not well made. If they trimmed off that plastic there and there, again, the canopy could go down just that tiny extra bit and then be flush, more flush than... I think it is a little more flush than it was, but it would be better, right? Okay, so that's the best I could do to improve this. Another note here is, as I was working on the back, there's some fine printing back here, if I could focus. Right there, I, I think that might say, like, twin cam, probably 16 valve or something, 16V. But it does say twin cam. And then over here it says Toyota MR2, nice and legible. Uh, I actually missed that the first time around, so. See, I think this, I can show you, this is a little of that sticky, but soft glue residue, yeah. So that, it reminds me of like silicone, but it's not, it's stretchier than silicone. I'm not sure what they use to put, put these things together, some sort of maybe UV activated glue or something. Alright, let me put it back together again. Alright, I'm not sure if you can tell, but I added a little black into the wheels, those rectangles there. I also had some black up here on those vents, some black in the vents down there. And I painted, well, sil well not paint, it's just a silver sharpie marker around the exhaust tips. So, that's what I did, make it a little bit better. Alright, let's look at a couple other models now. Uh, so, prior to this, I bought, I have this uh, second generation MR2, which according to the internet, I guess may have come out around 1990. This first generation ran until 84 to 89. This is made by Turbo Micro. They have this gimmick of the lights popping up and stuff. Which, when the down position, I'm not really a fan of, but with the lights up, I don't mind those, those gaps. And it's a black car, so it hides the gaps pretty well. So I think in the real world, this just got a lot heavier. And so it was less nimble, it was less fun, it was less raw, it was more refined. But uh, that may have been what killed it. Then we have the third generation, or technically it's called the MRS, the MR Spider. And, uh, yeah, I think I recall MR2 was midship runabout two-seater, if I had to guess. And then this might be midship runabout spider. Uh, I'm just guessing there. Uh, okay. And then a competitor, competitor that came along later was a reliable British sports car made by Mazda. You might recognize it, seeing how it's the most popular sports car ever sold. I'm going to let you figure out what that is. Yeah, see how the gray interior is so much easier to see than the black interior? Yeah. Oh well. So, as you saw in my convoluted review, this is a very problematic model. Uh, I don't know, I can't really recommend this. Most people don't want to buy a product and then have to open it up and modify it. Uh, maybe call me crazy, but I'm gonna assume that's what most people do. They wanna buy something and they want it to be correct, right? So I had to go and open this thing up like four different times to, to correct the axles, the axle width problem, uh, add a little lighter color to the interior, that I could get away with. You know, having a black interior is fine at this price point. But uh, fix the rear tail light there, the, that turn signal, and then add a bunch of black paint to the obvious locations. Now, the, the, the way Power64 thinks as a company, I love that you're doing this, these subjects, you know, the roof Porsches and this thing. But I think you could just make better models if you didn't make people buy this garbage. There's nothing sensitive on this model. No one is buying your products because they come in a case, right? People buy Mini GTs because Mini GT consistently makes a quality product. 
they put their money into the model and not in showing it on the uh, a plastic base with the thick plastic cover so I think as a company you guys would do a lot better if you just concentrated on making a model that people want to have instead of a model that comes in a plastic box that's just my rant for today you could easily take that budget maybe add some more paint apps that could have been nice all right well anyways I still love this thing because I have a personal you know affinity towards this thing this is a really cool car when I was a teenager and uh, yeah, uh, you know, I'm, I don't know if you can buy these used today. They're probably all rusted away. The Japanese didn't comprehend rust proofing, I think, until like the 2000s. So, uh, I don't know, the late 2000s, maybe. <laughs> uh, okay, anyways, I guess I'll see you guys in the next Power 64 review. I still like the brand. I just wish you guys would maybe ditch the uh, packaging and make better models because... Honestly, I think I prefer Mini GT. I prefer to buy Mini GTs because they cost less, they have the rubbery mirrors, and in general they have less problems, uh, percentage-wise, I would say. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next review. Bye.